kind of a high school history teacher. Uh, on the side, we uh, learn the historical techniques of sword fighting. How many of you guys seen the guys in the white suits with the foils jumping back and forth? Okay, that's not what we do. <laughs> that's what happened to sword fighting. It got sporterized and it went from what it used to be into a game. All right, so we're going to start uh, in the early days, the medieval days, and work our way forward. The oldest manual that Europeans have on swordsmanship is the one known as I-33. It was found in the Tower of London, written in German. It's with buckler and sword. There's very little description. The next one that we had both pictures and text was from Italy by a guy called Fiore de Livieri, who in 1410 put together the first kind of how-to book for sword fighting. Not only does it have pretty good text, it also has good visuals, and there's four different versions of it. And the sword that he recommended using is called a long sword. Why well, it's called a long sword is not really the blade itself, but because you have two hands that can grip it, right? And Lee Berry showed various ways to use the sword and stand in guard and fight. We're going to show you, we don't have a lot of room to move, but we will be sparring out there later today. We're going to show you some of the techniques of the long sword, and then we'll move on to some of the other weapon systems. Okay. So what John's going to do here is he's going to get to the guard or the woman's guard. All right. How many here are clever people? What do you notice about him? He's hard to hit. Yeah, he's sideways. Look where his hands are. And it, and it looks like he's open. If I wasn't knowing what I was doing, I'd be like, oh, that guy's easy. I'll just come in and I'll hack him. Right? But with a simple maneuver, he can stop me because he's set up to do that. Now I'm in trouble. Right? Oh, anyway. I'll try to scatter. <coughs> I am. I'll try to hit him really hard. <laughs> that didn't work either. Look at that one You want to do those well? Yeah. <laughs> And it still didn't work. All right, so these are all techniques that Fury taught. They all have names, so he's in the woman's guard. We don't know why it's called the woman's guard. There are five variations. He's going through all of them. They're designed to cut and thrust. He can stab me from there. He can cut me from there. He can come from the other side. Oh my gosh, he can do a lot of cool stuff from this guard. The defense that he just did is called the villain's blow. Back then, people did not like peasants. The word villain and villager come from the same root word. Yeah, and the nobility did not like these peasants. And so a villain's blow is if you give someone a sword, they don't know how to use it, they're going to swing, swing like an axe. They're going to use it. Yeah! I'm kind of the wrong guy for this. You're bigger. Yeah! He comes in. Yeah, big peasant swing, right? Big guy, right? So what Fiori taught is how to defend against that. And I'm going to stand in what's called a narrow stance. Not kind of. He's going to come for my head, I'm not going to dodge. Oh God. Right? And the defense is I'm going to put this sword up like a ramp and step over, and everything else works by itself. I'm not there. I leave. Right? A defense against a peasant. What happens if you fight someone who knows what they're doing? You already covered that. He said, hey, if you're fighting someone who knows what he's doing, your swords are probably going to cross. And there are only three good ways to cross a sword. Ticks. Little. At the tip, if I try to push my opponent over, they cut me. If my opponent does nothing, I stab it. At the middle, if I'm over here, I reach my hand up and I pull the sword down. They are not lightsabers. You know, everyone's like, you touched the sword! The sword is only dangerous when it is moving. If you grab it, like so, they didn't razor sharp the swords. I think they're sharp, but they're sharp, but they're not razor sharp. As sharp as they can make them. So what I, what I think is, if you take a razor sharp knife, you go like that, it's not going to cut you. Especially if you have even the lightest leather or leather glove on. It needs some sort of drawing action and some sort of hacking. And the point is, he can start pulling that sword back. Ooh, I'm in trouble. What happens to him? Dang, he's dead. And I'll be able to tell my children. I'm like, hey. <laughs> you can grab swords. I even saw the biggest guy you've ever seen pinch it with his fingers. Like so. And because you have the leverage, the guy wasn't able to escape. 
The cool part though is what happens when swords get really close. Those were right like four. And there's a whole bunch of techniques. I'm gonna do a couple of them on John, he's gonna do them to me. We deep in the middle, he's pushing down on me. Oh no. So the easiest one is this sword is no longer useful. I'm gonna take the pommel and bring it to his chin. Fiore, when he wrote this, he said you can make four teeth fall out of someone's mouth. I've done it. Fiore never showed techniques he had not invented or seen himself. I can give John a little push on his hand. Again, not 14 though. No more than four. And you're just being excessive. <laughs> I miss. Fury has mistakes. He's like, oh, you screwed up, it's okay. I come in, I miss. I meant to push this hand. That's all right. I have a trap. You can't do anything. I'm free to stab it. I'm free to pop it. it works really, really well. I can disarm it. Okay. Okay. Grab. My sword. Right, this is Jeremy. I'll come get it. Just going to show you so you can see from his perspective. We'll do a variety of what we call close quarters. Four teeth. How many teeth fell out of my mouth? Four. Maybe like ten left. <laughs>
you gotta be careful. If you're not paying attention, I just go straight forward without thinking. We were killing each other. This happened a lot. <laughs>